Hello everyone. So this is going to be part two of how to animate a run cycle. Uh, for this portion, I'm going to be burning through incredibly quickly. Um, I do not have time to fine tune like I normally would, uh, but for my students watching now, I tell you this, it's always a good opportunity to kind of critique my work and what could be improved upon. Um, if I sat down and, and noodled things to perfection, it's actually more difficult to see um, mistakes. So um, I, it's actually kind of a good thing for you to be able to pick up mistakes. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to burn through this as, as quickly as I can. Um, and it's going to look wonky, I'm guaranteeing you by the end, but uh, principles still apply. You wanna make sure that you're honoring timing, spacing, and the arcs is what I would love to get to, but again, there's just not enough time sometimes. Uh, if I were to put more time and invest more time into this, I would definitely fine tune my arcs a lot more. So let's get right into it. Now that I have the uh, hips and the feet animated, and they're feeling really, really clean to me, um, the next thing I wanna do is, uh, is the spine. I've got this down now that I have a really good uh, hip and feet motion. I, I'm honestly just going to kind of iron out the upper body. So to do that, uh, just like I was doing before, I'm going to go to the very beginning, go to my first frame. And I'm just going to try to emulate this to the, the close or as close as I possibly can. So as you can see in the reference, I do a very good job of kind of showing you the rotations of the body. Um, for this one, uh, I am going to first and foremost uh, break this up into pieces. I could, if I wanted to, start doing some rotations on the front, but I, I don't want to do that quite yet. I want to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm getting the 2D perspective right first, and then I can start worrying about the side to side. So what I'm going to do is, again, straight to the hips. I'm going to animate the hips first. Uh, I don't want to do this all the way like so because as you can see this character has a nice bend to them. So to add to that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this ever so slightly and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the line and start rotating up the spine. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Then I'm going to go up into these two. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because, um, believe it or not, a lot of movement, uh, people believe that a lot of the movement comes from uh, this part right here. So oftentimes when people are animating, when they first start out, they'll just say like, oh, you know, that's, that's what I want. I want it to look like that. Oh no, my neck is broken. Let me just, you know, tilt that back a little bit more. Uh, you don't actually want to do that. Um, a lot of the movement actually comes from the rotation of this hip, believe it or not. Um, and look, I'm, I'm only moving like the slight axis, but look how much it actually moves the character. So that's definitely something you want to keep in mind. Now, I'm not going to exaggerate this too much, but um, that looks pretty good so far. Um, again, let me make sure that everything's being keyed. Perfect. So. Uh, now that I know that every single every single thing is keyed, when I go to this next one, um, I know it's going to also do the same. So to combat that, um, rather than me having to go and, and make sure that everything's correct and, and just go down the spine like this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste um, the hip controllers all the way up to the spine. So I'm going to select and copy all of these. Copy those paste them here and now all I have to do is just rotate it a little bit more so remember the down pose uh, I'm I'm kind of up into this uh, and this so this falling and then I'm catching myself remember you want to follow through the action if you're going in a car and you make a complete stop the car stops and then you propel forward because all of that momentum and that gravity is still going even within the car. So uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is still kind of bent forward um, like so. There we go. 
So that looks pretty good to me. Um, and now that I kind of already got the animation down, I'm just going to kind of look at it as reference. And um, as you can tell, um, right when I'm making that push, that's when my body stops decompressing and kind of uh, goes back up. So um, what I actually want to do is, let's just go back to this pose and I'm going to copy these again. But rather than it being perfect, I'm going to change it ever so slightly. I'm going to paste that here. And again, I'm trying to straighten my body a little bit more. So I'm going to rotate this up ever so slightly. And then just kind of go down the line, um, adjusting these again ever so slightly. I don't want to move it too much. Um, if anything, just kind of moving by the pixel if I must. But I still definitely have that kind of curve right there. And then I really come up on this pose right here. So this is when, um, again, the force of wind is working against you. You're trying to move forward, and as you're jumping, your spine is actually actually straightening up a little bit so um, obviously not this straight absolutely not this straight what I would do again is I would copy uh, this right here and straighten it even further so let's go ahead and do that so let's copy here and paste there and now what I'm going to do is I really want to make this a lot more straight. So I'm going to kind of wind this up, but still have a little bit of a bend. Like so. Now that I have that, uh, you go back into the contact pose. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So I'm at the up. I go back to down to the contact. And uh, again, uh, if I was doing this in sincerity uh, for a project or an assignment, what I would actually do is um, rather than copy and paste from this pose, I would try to get it as close as I can and then alter it ever so slightly. But again, for the sake of time, I'm gonna to try to keep it uh, simple. So I'm just gonna paste that there. Uh, I'm going to paste it on my last pose. And I'm just going to copy this and go down here. Copy here. And this is the, I believe it's the push. So I'll go here push on that side and last but not least the up so the up like so and uh, again generally I would go right into uh, into blocking first uh, however again pinch for time just kind of trying to burn through this uh, but as you can see um, it's already starting to gain more life to it what we're really missing actually is the side to side rotation on the hips now um, you might be tempted or maybe want to do the arms right after this but what you really want to do is make sure that you've got the head up down the spine first so um, let's go ahead and this. So generally speaking, if you're flying in the air, um, your, your head's kind of going to be up a little bit, unless you're propelling yourself up from this pose, um, then you might tuck in your head a little bit. And then as you're coming down into the contact, you're coming down. So gravity is working against your head and pushing it up. So um, with that in mind, let's just do that as I'm explaining it. So um, I'm coming down into the contact pose. My head should be tilted up a little bit. Got that special 
shoulder. down and then as I'm pushing up my head is kind of tilted down a little bit and then as I come down into the contact my head is coming up and as you can see that kind of gives it a nice little delay that kind of pushes it down as I make the contact so, um, oh man, it's really exaggerated neck movement. Not a big fan of this, <laughs> but for the sake of getting it done, uh, again, we'll, we won't stress too much about it. So, uh, again, tilt that down a little bit because I'm jumping up. As I'm jumping up, my head's kind of compressing against uh, gravity. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste that. And that's serviceable for now. All right, so now that I have that, uh, next big thing that I really wanna do, and this is where I definitely wanna look at my animation reference, so let me pull that up really quick. Um, I definitely wanna look at um, what the body is doing um, in the front view. So if I go ahead and pull up my reference right over here, um, I'm going to kind of go down frame by frame just to see what's happening here. So my shoulders are coming down like so when this is leading. So when my foot is leading, um, the opposite side of the arm is also leading forward, but it's leading the movement upwards. So um, let's go ahead and check this out. So if this is leading, then my opposite side is going to be twisting forward. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just do this. You can kind of see it in the corner. Um, and I'll kind of pop this back and forth uh, like so. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'm looking at this now. And if this foot is leading here in the front, then this is going to be tilted uh, towards this way and then this hip is going to be tilted um, I want to say upwards okay so if this is leading down then this is going to be leading up because also I'm carrying that weight with a straight leg so if I'm going to prepare myself um, it's going to be catching a lot of that weight and the back foot doesn't have any pressure on it so it's going to be coming down. So uh, basically, if I'm looking at this in the front view, this foot is leading. Therefore, I'm going to be catching that weight. And as a result, what I want to do is I want to rotate this uh, down. Uh, but you know, it depends what you want to do. It's up to you. You can do this and then kind of like rotate your body up like so. Um, you could do that if you wanted to, uh, or if you want to keep it simple, you can use the hip controller that is already here. And I'm just going to rotate that like so. And then if that is going up, then this is coming up on the opposite side. And let's just see what happens when I do that. Let's just see what it looks like. So let me Also, another thing that kind of helps, you want to rotate this foot like so. So I can kind of come out a little bit. Okay, if you can do that. Um, and let's just look at this reference. And as you can tell, the foot kind of comes in towards the middle as it's making contact. So um, let's go ahead and do that too. Okay, so uh, again, uh, let's continue to watch this video. And it really looks like the body's leaning into the leading foot. So to do that, I'm going to do this instead. 
So I'm, again, remembering to use both axes. And already, like, you can see how dead this feels. Just by adding a little bit of rotation, it's making the character feel so much more alive by having some of this extra added dimension and movement. So remember to keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to just work on one camera. You want to make sure that you're at least working from both cameras and perspective view as well. So this is making it feel much more alive. Let's copy all of this animation to here and make sure we copy it in the timeline and paste like so. Perfect. And uh, I just want to see what happens if I were to delete this animation. I think this is one of those things where I was just like, oh, I think I could fix that, but yeah, that looks fine. Okay, sometimes there's frames that you just don't need. Uh, okay, so this is frame 14. I don't think I needed this one either. I'm gonna cut that one out. Yeah, I didn't need that frame. Uh, I don't think I need this 17th frame. Yeah, okay, so just a heads up so you all know what I'm doing. Uh, if you watched the earlier video, I was running into some issues where I was just like, dang, what the heck is happening? I, I, my, my rig is just, it's not working correctly. And honestly, all I had to do was just, uh, honestly, just kind of move the controllers a little bit and it just kind of fixed itself. So um, that was a troubleshooting error. I was able to delete those frames that I didn't need and look, the animation still looks fine. So I'm not entirely worried about that. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the front view again. And now instead of this, I'm doing it on the opposite side. So again, I'm selecting this, getting that foot out a little bit, kicking that in. And this is the leading foot. So remember, uh, my body is anticipating that contact. So that hip is adjusted up to get ready for that landing. And then right when I hit that landing is when I'll go into a, a neutral tilt and then I'll start tilting my hips back and forth. So um, with that one leading, if this is up, then this must be um, up on the opposite side. And uh, remember, uh, we're leaning into the kind of foot that is leading. So I'm gonna move that over ever so slightly. And uh, I should not show you this, but this is gonna be kind of cheating a little bit. Um, rather than me having to kind of go back and forth and to, to cleaning up every single pose, what I'm honestly just gonna do is uh, I'm just going to um, go ahead and delete this. Actually, let me see if I can, yeah. So this is what I would call lazy animating. Uh, however, if it gets the job done, that's all that matters. And uh, for my class, just a heads up, Sherpa came to visit. Hey, no, hold on. <laughs> Let me, uh, pause really quick, I'll be right back. I'll be back, though. I'll be back, sure. All right, I'm back. <laughs> so, uh, okay, now that I've done that, um, as you can see, you know, there's some weirdness going on with it, uh, but that's also because I don't have my infinite on. So before I put all my infin infinites on, I'm going to quickly save this, save as, um, and remember my ASCII. Perfect, this is gonna be iteration number two. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select all my controls for now. And uh, as you can see, there is no infinity for all of these controls with the exception of a few. So again, I'm going to select all my controllers. I'm going to go to curves, cycle, post infinity, cycle. I'm going to go to view, and this is what is going to allow me to see that post 
and pre-infinity. So if I go down here, uh, again, like so, now I can see it goes on infinitely. So if I go back to this, uh, this controller over here, uh, as you can tell, uh, let's see, is this what I moved? Now that I have that, um, obviously I absolutely do not want to do this. So uh, what I'm going to do, um, I don't want this kind of like bouncing back and forth. What I actually want is for this to kind of shrink in a little bit. And I want this to come out a little bit. So, and to, the reason being, if I just have it bopping back and forth, I'm kind of giving this like, it just stops there and it immediately comes back in. So I don't like that kind of like stopping all of a sudden. I want it to be more subtle. So um, I, again, I, I generally try not to teach using Maya for animation. I would prefer blocking, but this is a good exercise for how and when to use Maya to kind of help you um, determine your animation. So to do that, if I have this, this really short pop right here, I'm gonna hit a point and immediately move. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this and I'm going to increase the size of the bottom ones. And that's going to give me a smoother animation. So uh, let's go ahead and select this, select that. Let's just see what happens if I, no, it's gonna finish, okay. So that happens, that's okay. I'll just increase the size of this one. And increase the size of this one, like so. And those curves inside the graph editor is what's going to give me a much smoother kind of back and forth. Now, uh, obviously in a perfect world, I would absolutely not use this. To be honest, I'm cheating right now. Uh, I don't recommend doing it this way. If you're learning animation at all, by any means, what I do recommend is that you go in and do cleanup uh, frame by frame. Um, like if I were to do this differently, I would definitely do it uh, frame by frame. I wouldn't just delete things willy nilly and kind of fix them like so. Um, because as you can tell, it gives it a really robotic kind of look. And that's not really something that I'm trying to go for. So um, again, for the sake of simplicity, just kind of ironing that out a little bit. Like so. Okay. So um, again, I'm not gonna spend too much more time on this. Uh, let's go back to perspective. Uh, I'm going to quickly close the palms <laughs> All right, how about five? Uh, you know what? That'll that'll do for now. Yeah, that'll that'll just do. <laughs> All right. So uh, again, uh, let me put that at five. Uh, you know what? No, let's put that at. Let's see what this time looks like without the cup. Okay. How about nine, eight, seven? I'll take seven. All right, so we've got that. Put it zero. Put this at seven. Get the hands done. Okay, and then put really simple. Uh, I'm just going to move these arms in the kind of appropriate place using angles to kind of dictate where I put them. So this is angled that way. This is I'm also angled this way. Too excited. Make sure I'm in the right frame. Okay, like so. Okay, and just like I saw before, seven. Seven. All 
right, sweet. Cool. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste all of these controls down the line. So I don't have to keep fixing it. So, um, you know, if anything, this burn through is actually a good example of how to work fast, just in case you run into any roadblocks uh, or if you're in a deadline. So let's go ahead and paste like so. Perfect. Now, if I were to, again, adjust these arms, uh, let's look at the reference on frame one. Let's go to the left view. And I'm just going to rotate these and the angles that match. So making sure this isn't too crazy. No, that looks about right. I'll take that. And yeah, I'm just gonna go down the line and just start adjusting as necessary. So um, this is the down. It looks like this arm is coming back. So um, go back to the left view. So yeah, I'm just gonna go down and, and make this rotate back a little bit. Remembering timing and spacing, uh, I want to favor this, this pose a little bit more because it's up and then it's taking energy to come back. So um, again, just to show you again, on the right frame. Um, and actually, this is a really good example. So as you can tell, I didn't have the same frame because I had these all keyed. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste. Copy and paste these two controls. And obviously, I don't want this coming forward. So what I'm going to do is rotate back. like there and this is basically just going to be me going down the line um, copying my reference like so As you can tell, this definitely jetted quite a bit. So to match that, again, I'm just going to do like so. And same thing, copy and paste. Copy this, go down to this one. And uh, just so everyone knows, I will end this video at 3.30 for class. Um, I don't wanna to spend too much of your time kind of uh, doing this right here. Uh, but again, I want you to kind of see how I would uh, approach this kind of workflow. Um, if I was even in a, a bind for time. So let's copy that, that comes up even more. It's definitely come down a little bit more. Actually feels pretty good. And uh, you know what, I won't even spend time on the other arm because I feel like you all get the idea. Um, perfect, okay, so we've got that one. Last but not least, the other contact. Which I want to say is about the same. So let's just copy and paste that one. Just right there. Copy, paste, like so. Perfect. I don't want it to be exactly the same. I'm going to rotate this back ever so slightly. And then it looks like the arm does come in a little bit more. Or the elbow does. And then from there. Come 
back in. I just accepted other uh, other runner. Perfect. So I'm gonna send that one in. That's my, that's my straight. Um, then I'm going into this one right here. I'm trying to see. Just gonna take some things off really quick. Sorry, as I talk to myself, uh, just so you know what I am seeing that looks off. Um, so there's the, the contact, there's the down, there is the push, there is the up, and then I'm coming down to the um, straight ahead, and then I have like, okay, this is just, oh yeah, that's what's happening. Okay, yeah, I've got these random frames that I don't need here. Oh, I'm missing a frame. That's what it is. I'm missing a frame here. This is supposed to be the down. But I don't know what happened to the down. That was odd. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, not stressing too much again. Uh, so if I were to fix this, I would get my control here, get rid of that. Uh, this should not at all be rotated. This should be like so. And this should be a down pose. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay, cool. So again, uh, you know, it happens as you're animating. Sometimes you'll notice things like, oh shoot, like, oh, why isn't that working? I feel like I'm missing something. Um, don't be afraid to kind of take a look at your animation and be like, okay, what needs to be fixed? Um, but again, uh, not spending too much more time on this. I'm just going to finish up the arm and we'll call it done for there. I'm gonna do some last minute things on the shoulders so you understand how to approach the shoulders. And that will be it for this tutorial. Um, literally what I'm doing to this arm, I would do to the opposite one. So um, I'm coming in here on the down pose. My arm is looking like it's already kind of moving up like so. So this is the down. It should still be hanging out pretty much back here. So let me copy this shoulder, or this, uh, yeah, shoulder, copy like so. On frame 14. Uh, but this time it's gonna be coming down a little bit. starting to come back, but on the opposite side, like this. And then last but not least, uh, it's definitely on the other side. So let me copy this, copy that as well. Go down to this pose, paste. Um, but this time it's going to be way projected out. So, let me just copy this one and paste like so. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna just play that. Okay, so um, again, last two things. Uh, I'm just going to quickly clean up the translate. As you can tell, it's uh, looking a little weird here. Um, so if I were to look at this, I'm not at all sure why it's doing this kind of funny thing here. Uh, but you know what? This is so funny. Why, why would you do this? Actually, let me just see what happens if I delete these. being honest with myself, uh, what I would actually do is I would delete all of these. Do that. Hold on, so I just did say. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah, if, if I were to honestly um, do this in a pinch, what I would do is, okay, what's my up pose? My up pose is on eight. I would key that up pose. My next up pose is on, I wanna say uh, 16. Obviously it looks like not all of these are keyed. So what I'm going to do even further is uh, reference this. Uh, and I'm, apologies to everyone who's watching me right now. <laughs> I'm literally just troubleshooting and working uh, to kind of like really burn this up. Uh, so the next one is up here. I would get both of those and just jack those up. So now when I look at um, them in relation to this, I want that even higher. Like so. So that way you can feel the impact. And my down poses, I would key here. And my next down pose is, I wanna say frame 14. And uh, let me actually get all my keys and make sure that they're all keyed. So let's go down here, 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 here. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo this really quick. So this is my up pose. This is I'm coming down. This is a down pose. I definitely want that down pose to be down. So, but not that down. <laughs> so let me just drag this down a little bit. And then my next down pose is going to be on this one. And I'll just stop that down a little bit too. this one. Uh, yeah, um, that is that. Oh man, to be honest, I'm really not satisfied with this. But again, uh, if I'm going to crunch for time, uh, what I would do is uh, quickly go to the front view, make sure that that's tilted as is. Um, I also want this to kind of roll back a little bit, have this one roll forward. And uh, honestly, what I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to fine tune this. I'm not at all satisfied with this. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I highly recommend watching the I Want to Animate tutorial. If you haven't watched that one already, um, I would say that one's arguably one of the best tutorials that I've ever seen yet. Uh, with that being said, I am definitely going to continue working on this. And I think I'll end up uploading a video 
of, of how I would actually approach this. Um, now that I've kind of done this and, and kind of tinkered with it, this is my first time doing it with this rig. And so there's definitely some things that um, I would do differently, but um, the same principles apply. The main thing that I really want you all to get out of this is um, understanding the poses and then understanding the rotations. And then finally, when you're fine tuning, understanding the arcs of the moving parts of the body, the hips, the hands, the feet, and even a little bit of the head as well. So uh, let me again uh, go really quickly. If I were to do some like last minute fixes to make it look uh, a little bit better, uh, the main thing is this right here. I would definitely rotate um, the body more. So let's go here. This is rotated in. So I would definitely kind of do that. Uh, let's rotate this in a little bit. Like so. opposite side like so and then again if I were to do this in a pinch and I really wanted to uh, try to get this in as fast as I could I would delete this this and delete this. And then copy all of these controllers really quick. Copy here, paste here. And then I can go down the line start doing stuff like this. I'm kind of smoothing it out a little bit. I'm going down here, doing the same exact thing. Uh, yep, get rid of those. Get rid of that one. And again, this is a prime example of, of why I prefer to work in a, in a blocked way. But obviously, uh, you know, we're kind of running out of time a little bit, but that's okay. Um, you can kind of see how I would approach this if I were to do it the Maya way. Kind of like the dirty, just trying to get something in uh, kind of way. So let's go ahead and just jet this out a little bit. And already, see, I'm getting more movement out of this body um, just by kind of adding that. Um, it's still looking really robotic though. Uh, and you know, if I were to do this, even on two or 22, if I'm skipping that frame, I'm still kind of getting this blockiness. And as you can tell at this foot right here, uh, I'm getting that popping sensation. So uh, this is basically me, like I'm being forced to do all of this cleanup um, I wouldn't have to do this if I just kind of like nailed it the first time. But um, as you can tell, I'm still able to kind of like pinpoint and kind of tinker with uh, what needs to be fixed. So um, this one right here, uh, honestly, as I'm looking at this animation, there's just so many things that I'm looking at. I'm like, okay, that needs to be up more. Obviously, we're kind of getting this, this mechanical kind of thing because we're letting Maya do the work for us. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop this here. Um, I, I think this kind of gives you the gist of, of what I'm trying to do. Um, I lied. <laughs> uh, I, I want to rotate this forward, actually, right here on that frame. This one, I want to do the opposite and lead that one forward. So you're really getting that kind of uh, action, actually. And it makes more sense for the body. So we've got that. Then copy this. 
is up there. I'm honestly going to keep animating until 3.30. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is just kind of to show you the importance of walking, honestly. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool that I was able to do this um, in, in such a short amount of time, the second part. But in, in all sincerity, I want to get it done right the first time, and I want to make sure that it's blocked out correctly, and then I can start going into cleanup because as you can see, Maya is animating for me, and uh, Maya animating is not that pretty. It's uh, very blocky, it's very repetitive, but um, I would mm, call this almost here. Let me just get rid of this first. That's it, I'm done. Okay, one more. Yep, that's ooh, gold, definitely the neck. But yeah, obviously you can tell like I'm, I'm cleaning up um, when I should have got it done right the first time. All right, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> All right. Uh, so again, with that said, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm, I'm going to do this again uh, the way I would honestly want to do it um, by blocking it out all correctly the first time, getting the spacing and the timing right on the limbs, making sure that the hips are ironed out on the rotation axis, and above all else, making sure that it's clean. I want to make sure that it's clean first before I even go into splining. So uh, a good example of why I prefer to work in blocking, and it's because I want to be able to tell Maya what I want, not the other way around. So we'll call this tutorial here for now. I'll upload a part three, which is basically me um, kind of tinkering around and trying to fix it. Uh, but you know what? Maybe that'll be a good tutorial too. If you're ever finding difficulty with your animation, and you find yourself saying, hey, you know what? Um, how do I clean up this animation? I've, I've done it. I, I think I, I did it the correct way, but it's getting weird. So let's actually do that. This is a great opportunity to do a third tutorial or part three on how you would want to clean up an animation um, that is kind of just not giving you the desired results. So let's do that. And, uh, and I'll try to have that um, done today if possible. But thank you all for watching. Uh, this is, uh, I guess we'll say part two. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like right now. Um, yeah, kind of a weirdness, but that's okay because I will show you how to fix your animation if it does look something like this in the next part. Okay, so thank you all for watching and I'll see you in part three.